Hello, everyone. This is the CircuitPython weekly meeting for August 12th, 2024. Mm -hmm. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. My name is Tim, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python that's designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. Uh, CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to help support CircuitPython, CircuitPython and Adafruit, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting gets hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel as well as the CircuitPython voice channel. The meeting typically occurs on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. U.S. Pacific Time, except when that co coincides with a U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, there is a link to a calendar that you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send out notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you'd like to receive those notifications, ask us to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. There is a shared notes document that accompanies the meeting and recording. You can contribute to that document beforehand. The final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the document to skip around and view the parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 30 to 60 minutes. Uh, after each meeting, we'll post a link, a link to the next meeting's notes document in the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages there to find the latest notes doc so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but can't attend, that's no problem. You can leave hug reports and status updates in the document and the meeting host will read them aloud for you. Uh, if you do know ahead of time that you won't be able to attend, um, do just leave a note next to your name that says text only or something like that so folks know uh, to read out for you. Uh, the meeting is held in five parts. The first part is community news. That's a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware uh, in the community. It's a chosen set of items from the Python on microcontroller uh, Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. The second part is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries in Blinka. That one is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers, separate from our status updates. The third part is Hug Reports, and this is the first of our two round robin sections. Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing. You can take a moment to recognize the awesome folks in our community. The fourth part and the second of our round robins is status updates. Status updates is an opportunity to report on what you've been up to. You can take a couple of minutes, talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to over the next week. The fifth and final part is in the weeds, which is an opportunity for more long form discussions. Those can be discussions that come out of status updates or they can be identified ahead of time as a topic that's too long uh, for status updates. And um, you can just stick that down at the bottom of the note stock and then we'll call out whoever's got items down there uh, when the appropriate time comes at the end of the meeting. So that covers how the meeting will go. So next up, we will get started with community news after I take our timestamp here. Uh, let's see go timestamp um there we go a uh, couple of interesting things in the newsletter this week uh it was the 300th issue of the python and microcontrollers newsletter uh we're celebrating today the publishing of the 300th Py python on microcontrollers newsletter published since november 2016 we've provided a free resource to the python on hardware community thanks to all our subscribers and contributors there's a link here to the adafruit blog that talks a bit more about that uh, next up is uh, a note about CircuitPython Day. CircuitPython Day is this Friday, August 16th. Uh, Adafruit is de uh, has determined that August 16th, 2024 is the snakiest day of the year and designated it CircuitPython Day. Come celebrate with us. There is a link here to the Adafruit blog as well as some additional information about uh, the schedule. So a real uh, quick run through what's there now and you can um, hit that link to the Adafruit blog to look for updates to this as uh, the week goes through. But right now uh, what we have in there is uh, 3D Hangouts, a uh, maker chat with Guy DuPont, uh, CircuitPython project highlights with Paul Cutler and Todd Kurt, JP's workshop, uh, deep dive with Scott, and then I will stream uh, a, a game jam working on some games after that. Um, so check out the links here and uh, watch on the Discord as well as various streaming platforms if you want to watch along with any of the festivities on CircuitPython Day this Friday. Are you working with CircuitPython? Tag your projects, uh, hashtag CircuitPython Day 2024 on social media and Adafruit will look to highlight them. 
Let's see. Next up, we have a special release this week. Uh, Raspberry Pi released the new RP2350 microcontroller and Raspberry Pi Pico 2 board. Raspberry Pi has released a new microcontroller, the RP2350, last Thursday in conjunction with the DEF CON 32. Uh, the official badge uses the new chip. A new board was also released, the Raspberry Pi Pico 2. The RP2350 comes in four different packages, two with 30 pins, two with 48 pins, providing additional GPIO. The secondary versions add two megs of additional flash. The new chips use two ARM Cortex-M33 cores plus two floating point units uh, and also have two RISC-V Hazard-3 cores. Uh, only two of the cores are usable at a given time. The clock speed has been bumped to 150 megahertz with the new architecture and floating point along with three PIO units. The speed is about double at stock clocks while using less power. Besides the Raspberry Pi Pico 2, there are over 30 boards which were announced at launch from a variety of different vendors. There are links here to Raspberry Pi News, uh, the RP2350 datasheet, and the Pico 2 datasheet, as well as a link over to uh, YouTube where you can watch uh, our very own Lady Ada discuss the RP2350 and a few Adafruit devices that will feature it. Uh, next up, we have MicroPython and CircuitPython added support for the RP2350 chip. CircuitPython on Friday released version 9.2.0-alpha.2350, which includes preliminary support for the new Raspberry Pi 2350 and minor fixes and enhancements. MicroPython currently has, or at the time of writing at least, had a pull request open to add support for the RP2350 into their project as well. All right, all of these items and more can be found in the Python on Microcontrollers weekly newsletter, which is a CircuitPython community-run newsletter, uh, which is emailed every Monday. The complete archives are available at adafruitdaily.com. It highlights the latest Python on hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. To contribute your own news or product projects, edit next week's draft on GitHub. There is a link in the docs uh, to that if you'd like. You can submit a pull request with your changes to the draft file, um, or you can email to cpnews at adafruit.com or tag a post with hashtag CircuitPython on Macedon, Blue Sky, or X, formerly known as Twitter. Uh, and as always, uh, thanks to Anne for uh, all of her work on the newsletter. So next up, is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. Let me scroll to here. Okay, this section is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It gives us a chance to look at the health of the project separate from our status updates. We'll talk about the project overall and then separately discuss the core, the libraries, and Blinka. So I will tell you about the overall stats this week. Uh, overall, we had 11 pull requests merged with nine authors. Um, uh, let's see, I highlighted the names uh, down further in the library, so let me try to do this real quick here. The names that are uh, newer or less frequent or just not as familiar to my eye at least, meaning they might be newer contributors or less frequent contributors. Um, those names uh, are Roa Code, uh, Simon L. DWG, Eternity Forest, um, Jordan Hemingway Revity. Yeah, I think those are it. So again, thanks to those folks who might be newer or less frequent contributors. Thanks as well to all the other names on this list who are more familiar uh, to me, at least popping up in these stats from week to week. Um, we had three reviewers, so thank you to them. And there were five uh, closed issues by three people and 11 new issues opened up by 10 people. Uh, with that, I will pass it over to Scott if you're available to tell us about the core. Yeah, totally. Um, thinking about these numbers, I'm like, I don't know. I think they're missing the PR I did. Uh, we'll have to take a look at that. Um, OK, so stats for the core. We had two pull requests merged from two authors, Deshapu and Eternity Forest, and one reviewer, myself. Uh, for, uh, But it doesn't include the RP2351 I did last week. So that's why I'm like, hmm. Um, we have 20 open pull requests, so as always, we're comfortably on our 20, under the 25 goal, uh, which makes us on a single page. Uh, Issues-wise, we had one closed issue by one people, one person, <laughs> and two open by two people. 
Uh, so we're net up one, which I, I also don't believe because I opened like three. Um, for a total of 715 open issues, uh, you can check those out at github.com slash adafruit slash circuitbyathon slash issues. Uh, we have eight active milestones. This is used to track um, Adafruit funded prioritization. So if you, if you have something you want to work on and it's marked long term, feel free. We're happy to support you. Uh, but it's not something that we'll probably get to immediately. Uh, we have zero open issues on 920, although I think I added one at least this morning. Um, that's what we're, we'll target with RP2350 support. Um, and then we have 10 open issues for 91X as well, which are like issues open on the stable release. And those are ones we'll want to fix for 920 at least as well. Uh, so that's where we are with the core. All right. Thank you, Scott. Uh, next up, I will take a timestamp and tell you about the libraries this week. Uh, in library land this week, we had nine pull requests merged by eight authors. Uh, thanks again to those folks who are newer or less frequent contributors. Uh, we had three reviewers for library, thanks to Melissa Scott and myself. The list of pull requests merged this week is here in the notes doc if you'd like to take a look at it. The oldest one was getting up there at 468 days. Uh, it was a typing PR that I finished up, and the newest one, uh, like usual, we're down to one day. There uh, currently are, after the week, 46 open pull requests. Um, the oldest one is a draft at 720 days. The newest one is one day. There were, over the past week, three issues closed by one, uh, one person and eight new issues opened by eight people. That leaves us with 866 open issues across all these libraries. Um, of those, there are 103 of them that are marked as good first issues, which you can find listed over at circuitpython.org slash contributing. If you are interested in getting involved with CircuitPython um, development, report is from 8.7. I may have... Uh, Grab the wrong one potentially, or something going wrong with uh, Adabot here. Sorry, let me uh, back to here. Yes, here we go. Okay, so all of these uh, good first issues are listed over at circuitpython.org slash contributing. That's a great page to go if you do want to get involved with CircuitPython development. On that page, you can find a list of all the open PRs and open issues, uh, which are open against the CircuitPython libraries, all of which are found on GitHub under names like Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then the name of whatever library it is. Um, in that page, the, the first thing we usually point folks towards if they want to get involved and haven't done anything yet is uh, reviewing. So you can take a look at the list of open PRs, find something that is either interesting to you or that you've got the hardware to test, click through uh, over to the GitHub PR page, take a look at the actual changes in the code. Um, if you do have the hardware, go ahead and try it out and then leave a comment on GitHub letting us know that you uh, gave it a look, tell us what you found. Um, and then if you tried it out, let us know that as well and how it went. Um, once you get comfortable with that process, we can get you leveled up to leave official reviews over on GitHub if that's something that you would like to do. Uh, and then if you wanna get more involved in the actual uh, coding side of things, you can look at the list of open issues, which is also available on that uh, circuitpython.org slash contributing page. Um, similarly, will be a, a list of links which you can click through over to GitHub and find the issue um, for that particular library. And again, if you look through that list, find something either that you're interested in or that you've got the hardware for, then you can take a look at what the actual issue is, whether it's a new feature or a bug fix uh, or what have you. Um, go ahead and make an attempt to implement whatever that is and then open your own PR with that change. Um, Excuse me, if you do need help with the process, we've got guides uh, for contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub. We also have folks who are around uh, throughout the week on Discord who are more than happy to help you get spun up. So if you would like to contribute or review and you feel that you uh, are missing some piece of knowledge or, or some, um, you know, something related to the process, please come and join us on just Discord. Say hi, tell us what's up, let us know that you're interested and um, what you need help with, and we will be more than happy to help uh, get you to a place where you are able to contribute. Um, in terms of the library PyPI weekly download stats, we had, uh, let's see, a lot of sixes this week, 166,667 PyPI downloads across the 331 libraries. The top 10 list is here in the notes doc if you'd like to take a look at that. And the new and updated libraries over the past seven days are over only one over in the community bundle, and it is the T MIDI library by our very own uh, Todd Bot. So check that out if you're interested in MIDI stuff. Uh, with that, I will uh, ask Maker Melissa if you are available to read the Blinka section for us. I am available. 
Uh, so Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. This week we had zero pull requests merged. Um, there were four open pull requests amongst all the repositories. There it was one closed issue by one person, one open by one person, leaving a net of 100 open issues. There were 16,249 PyPI downloads in the last week, 18,624 PyWheels downloads in the last month, and we are at 145 boards that we are supporting. That's it. All right, thanks, Melissa. Uh, next up, I will take a timestamp and tell you about the Hug Reports section. Hug Reports is a chance to highlight the folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start, then we'll go down the list uh, alphabetically or as it appears in the notes doc to give everyone a chance to participate. If you're text only or missing the meeting, then I'll read your notes for you and we get to your name in the list. Uh, so I will get us started uh, after I take a timestamp. Uh, hug reports for me this week. Thanks to Scott for reviewing a PR in the Adafruit logging library and suggesting a better way to implement some of the added functionality. Uh, a group hug to everyone participating uh, in or helping to plan, uh, excuse me, group hug to everyone participating in or planning to hang out during CircuitPython Day. Uh, and an additional thanks to Anne and Liz for coordinating uh, as well as anyone else involved in the coordination if I have missed anyone. Um, hug report thanks to Jeffrey Thompson, who's outside this community. They have a, a website, jeffreythompson.org. Uh, one of their pages is about collision detection, and I've been living on those pages the last couple of days, and they have made it much, much easier for me to try to implement uh, the stuff that I've been doing. So I am uh, hugely grateful to Jeffrey Thompson for publishing um, very good guides on that sort of stuff. Um, thanks to David Glauda for finding and sharing some additional details about cookie cutter uh, around the values that you've used in past runs and a way to, to kind of get those back to be able to reuse them again. And uh, lastly for me, thanks to Deshipu for a good tip about a more efficient way to test for uh, collision amongst shapes. Um, next up, I will pass it over to Jerry. Yeah, hi. Um, yeah, thanks to, to Scott Tanute for uh, reviewing and merging the uh, Adafruit Circuit Python R RFM library. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, next up, I will read for uh, Jan No. Uh, hopefully, I've got that pronounced better. Um, they say hug report for Dan H and Maker Melissa for their help and patience guiding pull requests into successful merges. Further hug reports to Foamy Guy and Tanute for continuing to offer us a glimpse into the development process with their dive, uh, deep dives and coding live streams. And to Todd Pod and John Park, amongst others, for their humor and being positive figures who maintain a fun and welcoming community. Cheers. Thanks for that, Yano. Uh, next up is Maker Melissa. I want to give a hug report to Dan for testing the beta site and finding some issues. Uh, to GitHub user Elpa Kinnan, uh for a great suggestion about adding a check to Blinka to ensure the function of signatures match CircuitPython. We're putting everyone else. All right. Thanks, Melissa. And next up and rounding out the hug reports is Scott. Hey, Tim. Thanks. Uh, first, a hug to Dan H for posting the release notes uh, for the 2350 alpha in all the normal places. And also to Bill ADAT for reporting an issue with the S3 and the latest alpha, which I am currently looking at. All right, thank you, Scott. Uh, next up is the status updates section. Status updates is our time to tell folks what we're up to individually. I'll start, then we'll go through the list alphabetically. When I call on you, take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be up to until the next meeting. This is also an opportunity to provide tips and tricks relevant to what folks are working on. If a discussion becomes too long for status updates, then we can move it down to in the weeds as needed. So I will kick us off here. Uh, my status updates for the week. I submitted a few more uh, rough library conversion PRs. Um, I reworked some proposed changes to Adafruit logging that added the ability to use timestamps in your log messages. The original implementation was not matching uh, the CPython API uh, and was a bit clunky. The revised one um, does implement the formatter class and add support for the same API and behaviors that are found in CPython. 
Um, I have been working on some geometry helpers for intersection and distance, originally aiming to be used with uh, vector IO, but I'm now thinking it might be better to make it more generalized and just accept numerical values so that it could be used uh, in a variety of different situations, even in cases where you aren't um, directly drawing on the display, like with the vector IO object, for instance. Um, and uh, lastly, I coded up a very basic uh, implementation of the core functionality for a breakout clone uh, game, and I intend to refine it further during the Game Jam stream on CircuitPython Day uh, this upcoming Friday. And with that, I will pass it over to Jerry next. All right, there's that button. Um, yeah, so... This week I've been trying and mostly failing <laughs> to uh, add some SPI functions to the Adafruit register library. Uh, I'll keep plugging on it, but then uh, I think uh, Tim, you just posted a note which showed me that there already is a library to do that. Um, and I just started playing with it a little bit, and much to you know my appreciation, it's working the same way my version is working, which means it's it's still not working for me. But that's more likely because I'm not using it properly. Um, so I'll keep working on that, and I'll and uh, I'll do any follow-ups on on that library, I think, and uh, we'll we'll see where where people want to go with with the with the two of them if they want combined or separated um, after <laughs> after I get it working. And um, and I had a question about the. Uh, Adafruit Circuit Python RFM library that was uh, merged it's now out there, or it's not. It's now uh, available, but it's, uh, there's not been a release. So I'm just wondering, do you want to do a release to get it out, you know, in the, in the more visible? Yeah. Um, and should that release be a 100? Should it be a 010? And who does the release? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can um, share at least my perspective on it. My my thought would be we do uh, we definitely do want to release it if it's if it's in a state where it's usable uh, because the release will give us a few things. Um, most importantly, in my mind, it will get it into the bundle and it will get it into um, the pip release so that it's uh, available to install. So I would think yes. I would lean towards 1.0.0 personally, um, and. Okay. I do typically make uh, releases on the libraries. I usually go through a list once a week that shows all the ones that have commits but no releases yet. And so I will typically do it at that time when I find it. Um, but you are okay. certainly free to do it as well if you've got access uh, into that into that library. OK, I, I believe I do. So um, yeah, whatever whatever's easiest for you. I don't want to you know, get in the way of your, your process, that's all. Okay. Yeah. No. You. Uh, it definitely won't bother me either way. So yeah. If you if you like okay. to do it, you could go ahead. Um, and that and that makes this first release. Hopefully, it will go smoothly. Um, if there are any errors, I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> Sounds good. Right. Yep. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for all your work, Jerry. Uh, next yep. up is Maker Melissa. Hello. Uh, I worked on prepping to record a video for Circuit Python Day. Uh, I fixed an issue where the I also fixed an issue with the code editor beta site wasn't updating. Um, I fixed some issues with USB workflow uh, that Dan had found with the code editor. And I'll be filming my video today and editing after that. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Melissa. Next up is Scott. Hello. So uh, last week I was heads down uh, for the RP2350 launch. Um, there's an alpha with early support out now. Um, I will follow up with another alpha, hopefully by the end of the week. I'm debating whether to call it 2351 or just alpha 3000. Uh, basically, by putting it into the 2000s, I've got to do 2000s. I can't, I can't actually do smaller numbers, because that would mean going back in time. Uh, at some point, we'll do beta, but probably want to wait until the MicroPython merges are ready. So if, if folks have opinions, let me know. Uh, I need to test out RGB matrix. I got it working on the, or I got it compiling on the 2350, but I haven't tested it. I also want to fix a uh, USB host via PIO. Um, the Citron board has a USB A, which would be cool. Uh, so I'm going to do that. And also, low power support is, is still uh, not been added. So that's on my list too. And then I want to I switch to some bug fixing modes for a little while just to get uh, everything prepped for 9.2 stable. We have a number of issues open on 9.1x that we also should get done 
Uh, so I think I'm going to switch to bug fixing mode for a little while here just so that we can get 920 stabilized. Uh, and then last up, uh, for CircuitPython Day on Friday, I'm doing a one-hour deep dive uh, since we have so many other awesome folks streaming as well. All right. Thank you, Scott. And that is it for status updates. Um, next up would be the in the weeds section. So I will tell you briefly about that, but we uh, don't look like we have any topics yet, so we may be skipping past it pretty quick. This would be an opportunity for some more long form discussions, either things that came out of status updates or were identified ahead of time and put down uh, to discuss in the weeds. Um, looks like we don't have any topics for that this week, so we can skip past it and get on to the wrap up. Uh, so this has been the CircuitPython weekly meeting for August 12th, 2024. Thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to uh, support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit and the podcast will be made available on major podcast services. It'll also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter, which you can visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to. The next meeting will be held at the usual time on Monday uh, next week, August the 19th, uh, at the usual time of 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, the meeting, as always, is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join at adafru.it slash discord. If you'd like to be notified about any uh, changes to the upcoming meetings, day or time, you can ask to be added to the Circuit Pythonista's role on Discord. Send out notifications through there. Uh, and that is it. So thanks, everyone, and we hope to see you all next week.